Hey everyone, Charlie here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another episode of One Cuppa. We are this morning, this afternoon, I think it's morning, at the White Mountain Shrine Hakusan Jinja. Or maybe this is Shiroyama Jinja, I think it's Hakusan. But anyway, um, just at the foot of the trail that's supposed to lead up to this mountain shrine. We haven't actually been here on One Cuppa at least, oh, it has to have been a year. As you can see, this is just sort of surrounded on all sides. It's really, really close by to residential area. So anyway, let's head on up. Now usually, I come and do this trail about on the opposite side of the mountain, maybe once every couple weeks. It's not really, I'd hesitate to call it a climb, but anyway, it's a, it's a fun little trail. It smells really, really good out here, like fresh air and dirt and plants, and you get to hear some really interesting birds, as you can hear. It has sort of like a Endorian feel to it, doesn't it? But anyway, um, scary enough, when I entered, there was like this really just low, low frequency, like constant buzzing. So I think I parked near, parked, parked my bike near a, uh, a bee's nest of some kind, which does not please me in the least. But anyhow, um, be ready for a one cup of where I'm wheezing a little bit here, I guess, today. Here are the lion dogs uh, guarding the path, right? The one, the more stoic one and the one that's always ready to attack, to defend. And that is where we came from. It's really actually kind of a beautiful view, I think. Um, but anyhow, so let's get on with our topics slash viewer questions. So as always, I went to Twitter on Saturday to ask you guys what you wanted. Uh, if you had any questions to ask me, uh, because I'd planned to shoot one cup of Saturday night, which in fact I started to, but then it poured so heavily that it was just impossible to finish it up, so I apologize for this being a little bit late. But um, Mel of Nippon Culture Quest asked, what is my most memorable experience, experience um, so far in Japan? And it's a question I've answered a couple times, I think, before, but the answer is always changing. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's just this trail of ants going back and forth. I wonder what they're working on. Yeah, look, all the way across, all the way across this log. That's amazing. Really, really cool. And you can see that this moss is literally so thick, it's, it's like a carpet, right? It's all lifted up together here at the end of the, at the edge of the steps. Anyhow, so as I say, I've answered this question a couple times, and um, but yeah, the answer sort of always changes depending on what my what my headspace is, right? What I'm feeling nostalgic for, I suppose. Uh, and um, the truth is, I don't read it this very second. Let's come back to this question because I'm I'm having a hard time saying which exactly is my most memorable. So we'll go on to. Granny's question, which is, what do I normally eat when I'm, uh, when I'm at work, when I'm out and about, when I'm at home cooking for myself? When I'm at home, I eat sort of really traditional Japanese food. Oh, ah, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Ah, just, um, I eat really like traditional. Japanese food, but, um, so that means like, uh, miso, rice, eggs, and, uh, things like that, you know? Um, and almost 100% of the time when I'm at home, I maintain a vegetarian lifestyle. So that's one thing. But when I'm out and about, um, I've never been up this path before, but this looks like where the shrine proper is, so as you can see again, those same kanji 
White Mountain Shrine. Um, yeah, there are two things that I don't actually keep in my apartment. As a general rule, sometimes I do, but I don't really keep alcohol or meat in my apartment. Um, sort of a measure of prohibition against both for myself because I like to drink beer a lot. Um, if I drank it as much as I wanted to, I guess, I would be, I'd be a lot heavier. It'd be really difficult to maintain any sort of semblance of being in shape for running, keeping my weight down and stuff like that. And, wow, this is just a tiny little, tiny, tiny little shrine here atop the mountain. As you can see, wow. That's uh, humble, to say the least, isn't it? Wow, that's really quite beautiful in its own way. Um, but yeah, I don't keep alcohol for that reason. And it also keeps me from drinking too much when I go out on the town because if I'm drinking, usually I just want to drink beer. Like I said, I love beer, but like a, what do you call it, jockey, like a pretty sizable glass pint of, uh, I think it's a, it's a little bit bigger than a pint, but anyway, a glass of beer is like, depending where you go, anywhere from 500 to 700 yen, which um, adds up really, really quickly if you're looking to get a little bit shitty. So that's one thing. But also I don't keep meat because meat is kind of expensive, but also trying to limit how much of it I eat. Um, just because, man. Don't get me wrong, I love, I love the taste of meat, but there are moral implications which I have struggled with for a long time. But I'm not ready to cut it out completely yet. So when I do go out, that means I go to places like yakitori shops and izakayas where yakitori, of course, like, I eat, like, awful. Like, uh, in ter like organ meat, right? And then, I don't want to talk about it too much because I know some viewers don't like, are like true vegans, true vegetarians who don't like talking about this kind of thing, so. Um, but like tonkatsu or, yeah, anyway, that's when I get my meat fix is when I'm out and about, so. Um, back to Nippon Culture Quest's question, actually, this reminds me. Um, there's a friend of mine who sadly I haven't seen in, I don't know, four or five years. And the thing with friendship, right, is that friendship and relationships, human interaction is that not every relationship you have is meant to be this constant, everyday sort of, how are you doing, I'm fine, sort of mundane small talk sort of thing. Of course those relationships are great, right? Some relationships are meant to be, you really, really, um, which way should we go? This way we'll go up to the head of the mountain a ways away, a little bit further than I actually want to go today, so let's go this way. Um, and other relationships are meant to, in their most intense form, I think, well, last for as long as they're supposed to last. Maybe that means a couple days, the duration of a couple drinks in a bar where you just really get to talk and shoot the shit and get to know each other a little bit. Whatever the case may be, in this case, this friend, a, guy, a friend of mine named Daisuke, um, he was at my university outside of Nagoya. And we were very, very close friends for about a year and some change. So about the duration of my stay at that university and then, and then some. And, um, you know, the most, we did the most normal thing, you know, we went out to an okonomiyaki shop. It's the first time I'd ever had okonomiyaki. Um, if you don't know okonomiyaki, it's often sort of called like a savory pancake, which 
I guess is kind of close to the truth of it, but it's like, it has stuff in it, so it's more like batter with stuff in it, and it's just as much made of cabbage as it is of batter, and then there's like bacon and squid or crab or whatever the case may be inside, and that's covered with like a savory sauce and some mayonnaise, so anyhow. But I can remember this was 2000, 2007. So it would have been coming towards the end of uh, the Bush presidency. And I, at that point, was very heavily involved in political discourse, in, um, you know, things of that nature. Uh, heavily involved in animal rights, human rights, and I still am now, but to a lesser degree. And um, anyway, without, without beating the story to that, basically, basically, <laughs> basically, um, we just had this wonderful conversation while we ate and drank and, uh, and uh, yeah, and it was just this meeting of the mind. I wonder what kind of pretty little bird that is. Oh, anyway. The smell. It's beautiful, beautiful in here. I wish, I wish, I think I said this before, but I wish YouTube had smell o vision so you guys could smell just like the damp earth around me. It's just the most incredible smell. Um, and yeah, I mean, really, in, in comparison to other experiences I've had, it's, it's not terribly unusual to people go to a restaurant and have conversation. But it, it, at the time, it was such a deep, meaningful conversation. I connected with this person through his broken English and my very, very, very poor Japanese, like I'm talking pre-N5 level Japanese, in a way that, that was just kind of, it felt really profound and looking back on it, it still holds that, that sort of feeling for me, so. Um, not an awful lot of color besides green out here. I expect to see a little bit more of a, a little more wildflower in here, but of course, it's not exactly sunny, is it? So anyway, that is that is at this moment my most memorable, my most memorable um, experience, I guess, in in Japan. At this moment, it'll probably change in five minutes from now. But anyway, so I want to get on to topics, um, and the first is. Uh, I'm sure maybe many, many if, if not all of you, have had the experience where um, you've gone to see a movie, right? Harry Potter is the most popular example, I think. Um, you've gone to see the movie, and then you've talked about it with a friend who is a die-hard Harry Potter book fiend, who then proceeds to launch into a diatribe about all the ways that the book is better, right? And for the record, I am guilty of having done this before because there are times when movies, all right, movies need to be able to take. I don't want to go up that hill. I'm having flashbacks to when I walk through there and got a face full of spider webs. I hear you, little buzz buzz, wherever you may be. Um, you know, movies and uh, other mediums have to take creative liberties with stories because books have the. Uh, the luxury of being as long as they want to be to an extent. But anyhow, I'd never, I guess, I guess for whatever reason I thought that was a, that was a matter of Western, uh, fandom, I guess. To put it the best way I know how. A matter of Western fandom and, uh, <laughs> you know, because we're so willing to express ourselves and our beliefs and our loves of, of things, our loves and hates and hates, our likes and dislikes, um, in a way that generally disregards how, how other people might feel about things, generally. And so here, I'd never experienced something that passionate, I guess, before, until I was at Sinfukui City yesterday. There's a buzz buzz on me. Away with you. Um, I was in Fukui City yesterday and I went to, I think the shop is called Animate. I think it's like a countrywide anime slash manga good store kind of thing. And I was there specifically because I was looking for this, uh, 
for this manga called uh, Umimachi Diary. Sort of like seaside town diary. Um, I'd recently seen the movie, which by the way, this is me recommending the movie. Um, you know, with as many stars as I can give it. Five stars, I guess, is the standard. Don't bite me, bug. Come on, let's be friends. I think it's starring Ayase Haruka, I think is her name, and Hirose Suzu, and a bunch of other girls, but uh, women, excuse me. Um, and yeah, incredible, incredible movie. So I thought, oh well, finding out that it, that it's a manga, I'll go to the to this anime place because I couldn't find it at Book Off and ask them for it. And so I do, I go there and I ask for it. And I am given like this long diatribe, only about 50% of which do I understand. Mosquito, you are nearing your doom. Um, of her just telling me all the reasons why the manga is better than the films and I'm just like, oh God. Like, just like, oh really? Oh, I see, that's interesting. Like, well, I'll have to read it. Like, blah, blah, you know, like, that sort of thing, and it's fine, like, but it's just like, oh my god, people, let me walk away. Like, these are completely different entities, you know? Should be treated as such, although, oh, well, maybe, I don't know, I don't really want to get into that too much, but. So these are a series of stone statues which run for approximately another three quarter miles this way um, until you get to Nishiyama Park which is where I shot uh, the Tsutsuji Matsuri festival video which you haven't seen please check it out the Buddha and some of the some of the guardians along the way here really kind of cool really spooky the first time I came upon it because it was it was dusk and dark and orange in here and I don't know, it creeped me out a little bit. But um yeah, so I guess it was just it was just interesting to see the sort of like IP snobbery, for lack of a better way to put it, sort of exist over here too. Is the first time I've experienced that sort of like uh Yeah, that sort of zeal I guess. But I guess maybe that's a matter of my being able to speak well enough to sort of incite that kind of thing. Who knows? Who knows? But it's interesting anyway, I guess, though I say interesting not wanting to repeat the experience, repeat the experience again. Now, if you're watching this channel, there, ah, as I almost trip and die, um, oh look at the little tanuki. Sort of reminds me of Yoda. He's got some fantastic breasts. <laughs> That's an awkward thing to say. And I say he, by the way, because, yeah. Also, for those of you who don't know, oftentimes what appear to be, wow, look at these ants. What are they even going to do? That's incredible. Get away from me. Wow. They're just all on a mission, right? I know you're thinking, who gives a shit about ants? I care. It's cool, man. It's cool to see life at work. But, um, yeah, if you watch this channel, chances are you're familiar with the, uh, the concept of Shogunai. Right, uh, translated to mean something like, can't be helped, or there's nothing to be done. Right, and I know that a lot of people come here, when they come here to stay for any long period of time, tend to feel like, uh, don't really like that attitude because it seems like people are sort of giving in too much to their fate and not willing to, to, uh, to work to change an unfortunate situation or something like that. Um, and I bring this up actually, I'm going to call her out, uh, though not so that I can flame her necessarily, but just, um, I was talking about this the other day with, uh, Nippon Culture Quest when we were on Smellypedia's, uh, excuse me, Wikipedia's live stream celebrating her 1,000 subscribers. And, yeah, I think it was Megan Conrad had asked sort of like what our, our likes and dislikes are about Japanese culture and things like that. And now here we are back at the crossroads. Which reminds me, any of you ever play World of Warcraft, there is that, uh, 
there's that town called Crossroads in the Barrens, I think. Horde, in the Horde territory, right? Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, this, this was brought up as something that people don't really necessarily like all that much. Um, this sort of sh can't be helped, like, fatalistic kind of attitude. And I think that I sort of disagree with the interpretation that it is, that it is sort of sh just shrugging it off and being like, whatever, we can't do anything about it. I think nine times out of ten, when I have heard the expression, and I, I feel like I've heard it a lot less than I should. Um, but anyway, don't stop for one second or you'll be munched. Um, but when I have heard it, it's been like, how should I say? People have said, is this thing on? Yes, okay. People have said, Shogun I, about the consequence of a previous, uh, or the, the effect of a previous cause, you know? Man. <laughs> What's that noise I just made? Something that's right in my ear hole. And anyway, um, yeah, it's always been, it's always been sort of in regards to the, to the effect of a cause. Right, well there's almost like there's no sense crying over spilled milk type of mentality, right? Oh well this thing happened, let's get over it and move on. Um, and that's sort of my interpretation of Shogunai is that um, it's used more like, okay well we can't do anything about that crappy situation that has just occurred, but let's do something to make sure going forward that doesn't happen again. Right, so that's why I guess I sort of differ with a lot of the interpretations of it. I don't think it's like a, a fatalist, like, oh, accept, like, that's just how things are, that's just how things were going to happen, like, you can't do anything about it. I think it's more of, like, moving on and doing what you can to make sure that the situation gets better from that point onward. So I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think about that. Maybe I'm really off base, um, but I don't know. I, I guess I am, that is sort of my mentality. Like, I use Shogunai a lot. Um, when things go crappy at my school, it's like, okay, well, well, sucks to hear that, that, you know, X student has left the building temporarily or whatever. Um, but let's do what we can to make them happy, to, to show our value and to, and to get new students and stuff like that, right? So that is, that is, that is what it is to me. Church music seems to be coming from somewhere. There's one more topic I wanted to make sure to cover, and I actually wrote them down today to make sure I wouldn't forget. Be patient with me here for a second. Oh. This. Mosquito. I warned you. Apologies for your untimely demise. Um, for the last two, three months, three months now, I've been giving time. Do you hear that? Up at that mountain I told you about, uh, where we shot the Suzuki Festival. At sunrise, noon, and sunset, they play different songs from Ghibli movies. This is a uh, country road. Anyhow, my favorite time to go up there, I put a video of it on Facebook before, on the Facebook page I should say. Which guys, check out the Facebook page if you haven't, because sometimes if there's videos that I don't think are really fit Charlie No Seikatsu, they're too short or I don't have enough footage and I just want to put out something really short, um, there are sometimes like bonus things, for lack of a better way to put it, on my Facebook page. Um, and oftentimes they're also on Twitter, but they're shortened versions because Twitter can only has a 20 second video limit. But um, for the last three months or so, uh, I've given up, not given up, I've given three weekends um, of the month, not three weekends, but three mornings, like three Sunday mornings out of the month to go and just go with this group to basically clean up the area, clean up like uh, my, my cho, my town clean up all the garbage that's thrown out. Sometimes we come out here on the trails and we clean up if the if the town area is already pretty well taken care of. 
Um, but, and, and it's been fun. I've met some cool people. They're, they're older, older people usually, so I don't really like hang out with them kind of thing. But it's been fun to see them from week to week and talk to them and, and share experiences, you know. They, and I always really like talking to people who have that wisdom of a, of a, of a long life lived, you know. But there is this one dude, this one old guy who just, um, where are we going down here? There's something down here. Oh, that's a parking lot. But anyway, that's not where we're headed. There's something off to the left here. It might be, I'm not really sure. But, um, but the guy, just for the past three months, like every, every time I've been there, he's been like, he's like gone out of his way to sort of make me feel like shit. Like, wow, I am sweating profusely. What is this? So this over here is obviously a small graveyard. There's a very big bumble up there. Ah, this is the memorial park. Um, and I mean, so whenever I have been there like stabbing garbage and putting it in a bag, he's like, he'll comment on the speed at which I'm doing it. Or, what are you kind of bird? You're very pretty in yellow. This is some kind of a memorial peace park. I forget exactly because we're not near the sign, but I didn't know that the trail led down here. Ooh, hello. Um, yeah, so he's always making comments. And the thing is, ooh, there's more ants doing anything, a larger variety. Um, and every time I'm there, he's just making these comments constantly, like, okay, go faster, like, oh, you missed something. Like, yeah, I'll miss one thing, or I just haven't picked it up yet, so I've missed it. And it's so, sort of this kind of, what is that over there? Yeah, here's the memorial park where, oh, where, I think it's just a graveyard, but there is, there's a particular reason for the graveyard being here besides just to commemorate the dead. I think maybe they're war dead or something like that. I hope it's okay for me to be in here, but the trail had no, had no sign saying I shouldn't come in. Um, yikes, I feel a little uncomfortable. But anyhow, so he's given me, and this has just been like a, like a week to week thing, like I will, I'll literally leave for like five minutes to go use the bathroom and I'll come back and it'll be like, uh, the rest of us were working kind of thing. Huh. Anyway, this place is beautiful, isn't it? Memorial of some kind. If we, if we see the sign on, on the way, on the way down, I'll be sure to let you guys know what it is. But as for the moment, I am, I'm at a loss. Yeah, and, um, you know, so one time I said something to to the woman that's in charge of the that's in charge of the organization of the volunteer event. And um, you know, I thought maybe that would be that, like he would be talked to and that would be like enough is enough. And so come to find out you know, come to find out like Either nothing was said, or the guy was just like, oh, I'm not listening to what, what she has to say, like, the, this kid can deal with it kind of thing. And so, I'm there yesterday morning, and he doesn't say anything directly to me. He's just sort of grumbling to himself, thing like, oh, the freaking American is so slow, like, we don't have time to be waiting around for him. And I'm not going slow, by the way. This is the thing, like, it's a matter of objective uh, self-critique, as, as objective as self-critique can be to be fair. Um, whoa, look at the size of this bumble. He's going about his work. Can you guys see him? Oh, lovely. Um, you know, so he's growling himself and he's just talking shit basically under his breath. So finally I'm like, look dude, like I come here the same amount of time as you. Um, so like, if there's something like you need to say, then say it, but otherwise you need to be quiet kind of thing, you know. And it's sort of like this thing where of course I want to like avoid making a scene and being the troublemaker, but I'm not the troublemaker, right? And the guy of course is flabbergasted that I'm A uh, like 
bold enough to speak to him that way. B, did not, did not really understand that I spoke a lick of Japanese beyond really, really basic stuff. And C, I lost my train of thought, but basically the story ends with him shutting the hell up. The rest of the time he was sort of super respectful to me. Um, like, oh good job, we really got a clean job today, and like, sort of, you know, just being a lot, lot nicer to me, and it's just sort of, the one thing that, that I've noticed here, and I've noticed it back home too, it just always seems to be old dudes who are assholes. It's always old dudes who maintain like this, this bully, not old dudes, but it's always, what am I trying to say? It's like, back home, right? Back home where nine times out of 10 when there's some, some, you hear some guy yelling or complaining at a restaurant about something, it's an old dude, right? Um, here it's the same thing. If there's somebody complaining on a train or being a dick to a waiter or something like that, it's always an old dude. And it's just sort of like, you get it. Like I know America doesn't have like reputation for having reference for its old, not reference, reverence for its old, its elderly. Um, but, but it's there, you know, and it's sort of like this deference to these sort of like established dominant parts of society. And the thing is, basically what that ends up accounting to is that these people are allowed to bully you, to bully other people because nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna put them in check, right? And it's just like, oh my God. And so it gets to a point and I would urge you, I would urge you guys when you are dealing with these, because these, these aren't, these aren't microaggressions, right? Microaggressions, I think, and I'm gonna make a video about it, I think should probably largely be ignored um, and dealt with. Um, in the best way they can be because otherwise I, I think basically the trouble of responding to them in an overt way is not worth is not worth uh, is not worth it but when it is sort of these overt not non micro macro aggressions right um, you need to say something and I know that so many of us want to maintain the balance and not be the the gaijin troublemaker and I get that believe me I get that and I I, I don't want to be that, but there's a point where it's just like, oh my god. Like, clearly this guy is just giving me shit. And I'm not going to say it's a race thing. Maybe it's not. Maybe he just doesn't like me. Um, yeah, put people in their freaking place. Enough is enough. But anyway, in very good timing it would seem. Be gone. I'm an airbender, guys. I got rid of that bug by blowing at him. I'm so cool. Anyway. So thanks, as guys, as always, for watching. This has been episode 29 of One Cuppa. Before we go, check out the, just the vines that have grown up the side of some of these trees. Now, I think, I think this is, forget the name of the vine. Yudzu? Yudzu? Anyway, um, but basically these have actually come to North America, my part of uh, North America, and are invasive and are choking out a ton of uh, a ton of local plant species, which sucks. But they are really, really pretty, I think, to see them trailing up the trees like this. Very large, would appear to be some kind of red pine, perhaps. But anyhow, <laughs> I'm rambling. If you can, if you can imagine such a thing, I'm also melting because it is hot as huevos rancheros out here at the moment. But on that note, as we walk back through the, the God's Gate on the God's Road, on the Shinto, <laughs> um, that'll be it for me. Thanks always for watching. Let's take our last sip of our cuppa. And we'll see y'all next time. Cheers.